Shooting a cinematic sequence on your smartphone has always been like a uh, thing for me, you know? I feel like you most of the time have to download some expensive camera app and uh, it just seems a bit of a hassle to me. But the other day I actually decided to head out on the streets of Stockholm and give it a try using nothing but my iPhone 8 and the built-in camera app. And uh, these are the results. Alright, so that's how the cinematic sequence turned out and to be honest, when I was editing the footage I was shocked. I didn't know that my little phone could produce those kinds of images. And if you're sitting there thinking like, but I don't have an iPhone, well, to be honest, you're lucky because these iPhones, they are probably the worst phones to use for this kind of video making thing straight out of camera. Like if you have an Android or whatever other kind of phones there are, Usually you have a lot more things to change. The Apple phones let you, like, when you go into the camera app, you can barely customize anything. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, like, didn't it say behind the scenes in the title? Yeah, it did. We're actually gonna go back to the streets of Stockholm. Uh, you're gonna get to see how I got all these shots. And when we're done with that, we're gonna come back to here and I'm gonna show you guys the editing process. So I guess I'll see you in a bit or I'll see you there and then here yeah i'll see i'll just see you okay all right so the sequence you just saw was completely shot on my iphone 8 uh, i didn't use any third party apps or anything and i hope it turned out good i mean i haven't even shot it yet so i don't know but uh, there are some settings you need to consider before you start shooting uh, and i'm going to show you those settings right now this vlogging setup is ridiculous by the way I got the tripod and the external monitor and the microphone, so it's kind of heavy. Obviously this is going to be different depending on what phone you have. Uh, I'd say that most phones you do it in the camera app, but since we're on an iPhone here, they've hidden it in the menus. Uh, so basically just go into your settings, you go down to camera, and here you can choose whatever frame rate you want to shoot in. Um, we're going to shoot in 4K60, which means 4K resolution at 60 frames per second and uh, that's gonna allow us to slow down the footage around 50% or so. Um, obviously if you have a Samsung or something I think some phones can even shoot 120 FPS. Uh, so just choose whatever frame rate you want to go with and uh, yeah. The second thing you want to think about is that you want to be shooting in a vertical way. You don't want to hold your phone like normal like this. You want to hold it like this so you can get that nice 16.9 aspect ratio uh, that you use for basically all videos. The last thing you want to consider is you need to find a way on your phone to be able to lock the exposure. Now I don't know how to do this on other phones but for the iPhone you just tap down like this and you get that little square and then you can drag this sun up and down to adjust the exposure. Because if you're not doing this the phone is going to change the exposure itself when you're pointing the camera around and you definitely don't want that if you want the cinematic feel to your video. Uh, I think this square also works as a focus point, so if you want to get nice bokeh, uh, you have to put this focus point on the object in the foreground or in the background. Alright, so now when we have all that figured out, uh, it's time to start shooting and I don't really have a plan or anything, so I'm just gonna walk around. When I find a spot to shoot, I'm gonna put down the tripod so you can see what I'm doing. So as you can see here behind me, uh, there. I found this nice church building, I don't know if it's a church to be honest, but some kind of nice building here in uh, Stockholm. And the thing I do now is I start looking for some object that I can use to, to reveal this frame. Uh, so basically just maybe like that little post there or maybe a sign or something. So I'm always like looking for foreground objects to be able to like block the frame.
As you can hopefully see when I'm shooting, I'm always trying to have some kind of motion in the shot. Apart from that, I'm also looking for like foreground objects, like if I want to shoot down here, for example, I'll probably go up to this wall here and do something like this. Uh, because that's also going to be like, it creates depth in the shot, it creates motion. When you're just standing like this, straight, it's not going to look that good, but if you have some motion, it's instantly going to look better. I think you know what I mean. And all these things that I'm talking about, they are a lot harder to accomplish on a phone. So if you manage to do it, uh, shout out to you, because when you have a phone, it's so lightweight, so it's going to be really hard to keep it steady. It's going to be really hard to create those movements in the shot. Um, so yeah, if you pull it off, shout out to you. Alright, so uh, it started raining quite a bit now and my phone is about to die anyway, so I'm gonna pack down the camera and uh, head back home and hopefully we get some nice footage. It feels kind of unfair to be honest, because you guys already know how it turned out. Uh, I'm just in this like nervous slash excited mode where I don't even know what I shot, so yeah, I'll see you guys back home. Alright, so now when you've seen how I got the shots, it's time to jump into the editing process and to be honest, this is probably the key, like the most important thing when it comes to smartphone footage. Um, nine out of 10 times, it's not gonna look good straight out of camera. And to be honest, like when I was out shooting, I was thinking of just going back home because I thought it was so shit. And when I came home and watched the footage on my phone, I was like, no way this is gonna be usable. Um, which is why I think it's important that you keep watching because when we put this, in Premiere Pro and put the slow motion on with all the effects and the stabilization and the, when everything comes together it actually becomes like a real nice cinematic piece. So yeah, let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you guys how I did it. Alright, so here we are inside Premiere Pro and we have the finished edited sequence here in front of us and to be honest my initial plan was to give you guys like a full tutorial from start to finish editing this piece but um, I ended up editing this on a train, so um, yeah, we're gonna have to save that for another video, I guess. I'm gonna show you like the most important things that you need to do to your footage to make it look cinematic. Uh, because I prepared a sequence here with the first five clips and uh, we're gonna make them look exactly like they look in the edit. Obviously now they're just straight out of camera, shaky, just looking kind of weird. And we're gonna make it look like this. So uh, let's go. And the first thing I did when I imported the footage is I knew from the start that I wanted every single clip to be in slow motion. I did it from here. So I went into the project files over here and I went into the iPhone footage and I just selected all of these. And I went into modify, interpret footage, and I chose 24 FPS, which is the same frame rate as my sequence. So that is going to maximize the amount of slow motion and it's gonna be so that when you put the clips inside here, it's already gonna be in slow motion. Then I just went through all the clips and decided what clips I wanted to use, basically. When you've done that, when you have your slow motion clip, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to apply stabilization to every single clip. Shooting with the phone, as you can see, it's kinda like shaky, especially like when it's like just little shakes like this, the warp stabilizer is, is gonna make wonders for your footage and yeah, I used it on every single clip and you're probably gonna want to do that too, so let's go ahead and apply Warp Stabilizer on every clip. Alright, so Warp Stabilizer has done its job and we're gonna watch it, I've rendered it so we can play it through.
And I mean, just straight off the bat, it's looking a lot more smooth. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into here and we're gonna grab this adjustment layer. Bam, bam, bam. Drag it out over all the footage. And we're going to find an effect called crop. So there we go. And we're gonna add top 13, bottom 13. And now we have cinematic black bars. And the reason I wanted to do this right now is because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add fake motion to these shots. And having these black bars is going to give us extra room to work with when it comes to moving around the footage. And the first thing I want to do here uh, on this clip is it's kind of like when I did it, I kind of followed the cars like the side. But I would want this church up here to be like centered and I want the shot to go towards that centerpiece uh, clock or clock is it called? Yeah, it's a clock, I guess. Um, to go towards this area. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna add keyframes for position, scale and rotation. So now we have a keyframe here and uh, that keyframe basically is, means that we're starting off from this exact point here. And now we're, the next keyframes we're going to be are going to decide where we want the footage to go. So basically I'm gonna move the footage uh, we're going to start by scaling it into 120% and then I'm just going to move it to where I want it to end. Uh, maybe 125. I want to get that church in the middle of the frame. I think that's pretty good. And then we're going to add some rotation as well to make it straight. And then we have to move it back a little bit. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So now we have three keyframes that are in this moment here and we're gonna drag them all the way over here. So basically what this means now is from here to here, these keyframes are going to like, it's going to move to that position. It's like starting back here and it's moving up towards the, the church or the, the clock or whatever we called it. So yeah, that's looking pretty damn good to be honest. And uh, if we compare it to what we had before, it's looking a lot better. So yeah, we just created some fake motion in the shot. And uh, we're gonna jump over to the next clip and we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, since I already have some rotation and some pushing in on this shot, I decided to go with uh, creating like a warp effect or like a parallax effect. And uh, the way we're gonna do that is like, this footage is moving forward and we're going to zoom it backwards. So basically just go to the scale. Uh, we're going to start it at like 115 and then we're going to create the keyframe to 100. So we're basically starting zoomed in and it's going to zoom out and uh, it's going to look like this. It's not super like apparent in this particular moment, but I still think it's add a, it adds a little bit of spice to the to the footage. And this next one here is just a push in towards this like center, I guess, thing. And same thing here, like the footage is going a little bit to the right, as you can see. So we're going to add keyframes to make it like just go to the center, basically. Go with the position and the scale to be able to make it go straight. So um, just do the same thing as we did on the first clips. Put keyframes in the beginning with the original value. And then we're going to go all the way till the end. And we're going to scale in a little bit. And we're going to move this a little bit to the left to make that go in the center. So let's take a look at that. Nope. That's way too much. Now it's like going to the left instead of to the right. So we're gonna have to change that again. And maybe let's try just having it there. All right, yeah, that's good. Now it's just going straight ahead and it's, yeah, it's looking good. So next clip and this clip I actually wanted to get a shot of the Christmas tree and then I realized that I had these uh, little decorations here in the background and I also have a close-up shot of that. So I actually decided to make it look as if the footage is focusing on these two little things here, like we're going towards them. And 
again, like we're gonna do it with the scale and position keyframes, uh, creating some fake motion. So just go to the start of the clip. We're going to use position and scale in this case, and then go to the end of the clip. And we're gonna increase the scale. And that allows us to move the footage, and we're gonna move it like down towards those things, um, the decorations. So let's see how this looks. And for this next clip here, I don't think I actually did anything to it. Maybe like a small scale or something just to enhance the effect. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just all up to you basically. And uh, that is about it when it comes to creating fake motion. So I'm gonna render this out and we're gonna go ahead and look through the footage. So there we go, let's play it through. And I mean, as you can see already, these two things, the warp stabilizer and the fake motion stuff is going to make the biggest difference on your footage. And with the music in the background, it just already almost feels like a cinematic piece. But yeah, let's jump to the next step of this tutorial, uh, which is going to be color grading this footage. And the way I did that is I dragged an adjustment layer on top of the clips. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Go into the color panel and I just used my orangine a lot, actually, because uh, I'm lazy. So put this on the footage and straight off the bat, it looks kind of bad or it looks very warm. Uh, so we're going to drag down the intensity to about 80 and we're going to cool down the footage to like somewhere around there and uh, we're actually gonna drag down the intensity even more so basically if you don't know what this is is you can add a LUT in the creative tab here and you can decrease the intensity of the LUT so now it's at like 10% and you can drag it up and up and up and up and I think somewhere around like 60 is looking good for this footage and uh, when we've done that we're gonna cut up the adjustment layer into pieces because we might want to make some um, adjustments to the particular clips. Uh, this first one is looking good. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the next one. And that's looking kind of dark, so we're going to increase the exposure. Yeah, that matches a bit more. And let's see this clip. That is looking okay, I guess. Maybe I added some warmth to match the other shots and play around with these. That's looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next one. And that is a bit of a warmer clip. But I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Just maybe decrease the saturation a little bit to make it match to the other clips more. And this one, same thing here. Decrease the saturation. Maybe. Yeah, just like. There's no rocket science going on here, guys, and um, that is about it. Like, that's everything I did with the footage. I added stabilization, I added the fake movement, I added the color grade, and I put the music underneath and cut to the beats. And um, let's render this out and see what we got. And I mean, it's nothing special, but can you believe this is shot with an iPhone, guys? Like, seriously? And we have some shakes and stuff here, but again, this was my first try, and probably you're not gonna get it perfect every time, but um, yeah, just do your best, and uh, you're probably gonna end up with a really cinematic sequence. And right at this exact moment, I'm actually realizing that I forgot to record an ending for this uh, video on the camera. So I think we're going to have to say goodbye from inside Premiere. And um, as always, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So peace.